Welcome to the presentation on the AI Africa Consortium Education Strategy. My name is Greg Barrett and in today's presentation I'll be joined by Roy Forbes and Marcelo Rabai. The intention of this presentation is to provide you with an overview of efforts underway to significantly bolster learning programs for those in Africa. If you're not familiar with the AI Africa Consortium, please take a look at the session by Lynn Morris and Barry Dwalatsky for an overview. In this session, I'll cover the general thinking behind the strategy. Roy will cover the efforts underway at FITS for the AI Africa Consortium. And Marcelo will provide insight into his experience building and rolling out TinyML courseware. Our thinking is built around the following points. To significantly increase existing capacity to support students and faculty. Rapid development and scalability of programs. Strictly no reinventing the wheel. Providing courseware to students that is world class. The inclusion of universities where universities focus on value add. An approach of getting going by working with those who get it. Briefly expanding on each. To get out a few hundred top notch persons in machine learning, research and application across various disciplines in science, finance, legal and engineering. In Africa requires feeding in a few hundred thousand learners. Our objective is to reach over 100,000 students and faculty a year by working with MOOC providers and universities in the AI Africa Consortium. To develop sufficient capacity requires establishing a pipeline that extends from short courses to undergraduate programs and ultimately to graduate programs and real world application. We started with Coursera as WITS University, the lead institution behind the AI Africa Consortium already has an agreement with Coursera. Working with Coursera does not preclude working with other providers. Platforms like Coursera are tried and tested and currently support tens of millions of learners. Our strategy is vehemently opposed to any and all efforts that seek to consume scarce resources on building what already exists. Courseware development and maintenance is costly and time consuming exercise. Simply, if courseware is being developed, it must be novel and not duplicate what already has been done. Reference is an outstanding overview of widening access to machine learning with TinyML, which provides an example of what it takes to build and maintain a high quality course. Given the cost of education and the availability of outstanding courseware, anything subpar cannot be justified to students. Feed them anything less and you can expect them to call you out. The path in data science, machine learning and deep learning space is well developed. Some examples that come to mind. There is introduction to statistical learning with applications in R. The Bloomberg Foundations of Machine Learning. And Ring's Deep Learning AI courseware. Jan Lekun's Deep Learning course from NYU. Full Stack Deep Learning, TinyML, Fast AI. There is Open Data Science for All. You can pick a piece out of the machine learning stack and there's free and open source courseware already available, even for the instruction set architecture. Even the Open Source Society University, offering a full education in computer science with the courses themselves coming from persons at Harvard, Princeton and MIT. It is a paradigm shift for many in academia who are accustomed to building courseware. Instead, leading universities have steadily been moving towards what is called the flipped classroom. A flipped classroom format means that learners watch videos and complete in-depth assignments and online quizzes at home, then come to class for discussion sections. The classes generally culminate in an open-ended final project with the teaching team generally assists with. Such an approach enables universities to rapidly build capacity in machine learning research and application, and the universities can build their programs and courseware around these courses. This includes domain-specific materials, projects, and assignments as part of the flipped classroom format. 
There is no shortage of collaborations and opportunities for students and faculty on real-world projects. And our intention is to connect the pipeline of students and faculty to various efforts, including those within ML Commons. Where current areas of work include data, best practices, inference, mobile, tiny, power, research, algorithms, medical, science, training, and benchmark infrastructure. From science to conservation, the opportunities for students and faculty are numerous to actually do meaningful, impactful work. This is actual AI for good. As a participant in TinyML4D, we are moving forward with the rollout of TinyML in the African region. This includes eventually providing a curriculum for high school students. The recent announcement by UCT launching an online high school platform is an extremely encouraging precedent. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Roy Forbes and I'll be discussing a few of the efforts underway at WITS to host and manage the AI Africa Consortium. The AI Africa Consortium serves to create a network of researchers from both academia and industry hailing from all over the African continent as well as further afield, all of whom have a vested interest in the success and sustainability of Cirrus. Cirrus is a potential vehicle whereby the final report and recommendations of the Presidential Commission on the Fourth Industrial Revolution can be realized and implemented. In relation to our current discussion, one of the key findings of this report was that in order for our society to remain globally competitive, we would have to invest quite heavily in human capital development. The reasons for this are quite obvious, as developing a productive and competent workforce is crucial to helping the African region to participate, not only in the fourth industrial revolution, but to grow as a whole. Education is a crucial and important area of this development, and given the expanse of our continent, the use of remotely accessible educational platforms are quite necessary. Naturally then, in order to achieve this on a broad scale and in a reasonable time period, an effort such as this will require that we have access to a number of online resources such as massive open online courses or MOOCs as they are known. MOOCs can provide us with access to educational content that can reach a number of prospective students with little need for new infrastructure and also with minimal investment since it will allow us to make use of features such as a flipped classroom format. A flipped classroom format is simply a pedagogical approach that moves instruction from a group learning space to an individual learning space, such as the kind which we're using right now during remote learning. An example of, an, of a platform such as this, the one which I will be discussing next on the few slides, is of course the well-known and well-established Coursera platform. As many of you know, Coursera is a platform that hosts a catalogue of over 7,200 courses developed at universities and private institutions around the world. In fact, a simple keyword search of their catalogue reveals that the site contains several thousand courses either directly dealing with or making use of some sort of data science component. And these courses span multiple disciplines and fields of applied and pure research. This course content is currently accessible and includes the necessary support measures and infrastructure that would allow a would-be student to enrol and start using the platform for learning and they can do so almost immediately and with little infrastructure needed. So, should an instructor wish to add a machine learning module to an existing degree program on offer at the institution, they can do so using any of these already existing course materials. Additionally, the Coursera platform can also be used to develop custom assignments, assessments, and what are known as guided projects. Guided projects, for example, aim to provide students with job-relevant skills that they can make use of through an interactive experience that is guided by a subject matter expert. Finally, institutions can also generate revenue by having the novel course materials that they have developed added to the Coursera course catalogue, thus providing further chance for reaching more students as well as providing an opportunity for revenue generation. 
So linking this back to our discussion, the AI Africa Consortium, we believe, is a good vehicle with which to adopt widespread use of online platforms such as Coursera, which would grant access to educational materials for as many students as possible. Many of the materials and learning programs that are available through the Coursera platform have been developed by subject matter experts and are of the highest level of quality in terms of both the content and the instructors. The large numbers of students that are enrolled in these courses are evidence enough of this. Take for example, as is shown on the left hand side of the slide, the introductory machine learning course offered by Andrew Ng, which is over 4.3 million students enrolled at present, with many more having already completed the course. This is the type of content that we would like to provide access to for the AI Africa Consortium members. This is primarily because the use of platforms such as these provide us with an opportunity to reduce the cost of education by lowering the cost of course development and maintenance by leveraging existing course materials and infrastructure. It also allows us to focus on the value add propositions presented by these platforms, such as the flipped classroom format and the guided projects provided by Coursera. Furthermore, by leveraging existing platforms, we can also significantly lower the cost of education per student through economies of scale and also lower the cost of course deployment through the use of these MOOC platforms. Finally, the Cirrus resource and infrastructure that are available within the AI Africa Consortium will complement many of these courses. This is because the courses mentioned here will feed in high quality faculty and students into some of the efforts that we have mentioned earlier. So with VITS, we're currently exploring exactly how this interaction may be formalized. The Coursera platform is currently being used for staff development at WITS University, and it is the intention to also provide the WITS student cohort with access to a Coursera for Campus license in the near future. With this in mind, we are seeking to develop a number of short courses to embed machine learning components in existing courses, and also to develop new course materials that are to be placed on the Coursera platform. These courses will be piloted within the university in the School of Chemistry. Chemistry as a subject is a good test bed for these concepts as it contains numerous chemometric examples, particularly in signal processing. And these examples show that in time, chemistry as a subject will greatly benefit from the advancements in computing abilities that machine learning will provide. For the field of chemistry, as well as numerous others, Adding existing content from the Coursera platform will help us to broaden the scope of the courses that we already have on offer. This will then also help us to attract and retain even more talented students while also ensuring that these students are engaged in learning activities that involve the use of or the consumption of global content which is much needed in order to maintain relevance and competitiveness and which will ultimately ensure that our graduates are employable on a global scale. With these efforts in mind, we are therefore currently seeking to obtain a Coursera for Campus license, which the other members of the AI Africa Consortium can make use of in an identical manner. So, to reiterate, we are currently exploring options and seeking funding that would help us to obtain a Coursera for Campus license for the exclusive use of the AI Africa Consortium. In doing so, and by making full use of the capabilities offered by the Coursera platform, we believe that we can ensure that we will have rapid uptake of a large number of students spanning multiple disciplines from institutions across the African continent. We will also be able to make use of the Coursera platform to create and host course content that can be tailored to region-specific research and development challenges and social issues. Furthermore, we can also make use of the Coursera platform to introduce a larger number of African researchers and research students to the fields of machine learning and artificial intelligence, and also allow them to upskill 
and incorporate data science practices to enhance their existing research activities, which can aid them ultimately in developing and innovating around their own research ideas and interests. Hello, everyone. I'm here to talk about TNML, Embedded Machine Learning, and uh, our educational experience in Brazil regarding this subject. Who I am? I'm Marcelo Rovai, and uh, I'm an engineer. I'm a Brazilian living in Chile nowadays. I'm a master in data science, like data science for UDD Chile, and uh, a volunteer professor at uh, UNIFE, Federal University of Tejuba, where I'm teaching the first uh, TNML course for engineering undergrad students in Latin America. But uh, first of all, what is machine learning? What's TNML? Well, TNML is a fast growing field of machine learning, something brand new, where we are, we are mixing three great areas, three major areas of interest, like algorithms, hardware, and software. So it's a novelty and, uh, and, and together bring a lot of uh, the challenges uh, for us professors. Well, it, the, the important thing about TNML is, is that uh, is we have machine learning, it's part of in, artificial intelligence, running, running on device, running exactly what the things are happen. It's in the, it connected to the physical world. That's very interesting. And the big challenge that we have is that machine learning it works with a very, very, very small amount of uh, power with a small batteries, you know, and uh, in, in devices with, uh, you know, only few kilobytes of memory. This is the big challenge. Besides uh, all the challenge that we can have with such kind of uh, applications, very, very tiny devices, we are, we are, we are it's possible to find machine learning, teeny mail applications everywhere nowadays like personal assistant that you can see in our home as Alexa, hey Google, in office to, you know, turn on, turn off lights automatically to, you know, to see if a people is a person is, a, is there to, you know, when you press a button to the elevator or, or, or use your voice to call the elevators, doing, using both two types of algorithms with audio and, 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 and vision in the industry with, uh, with anomaly detection, you know, we can, we can prevent if a machine is, you know, is running with a problem or not. But not long, only, in, 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 let's say, it's all, not, not only with the simple devices you can find, we can find TNML. Nowadays, TNML can be found in, in for example, in several areas in, in the industry. In, and more important, we can find in health industry, in animal sensing, we are seeing today uh, such kind of devices helping to protect elephants in Africa. We are seeing this this type of devices in using in very small in very in very small very small tiny you know equipments like like uh, you know smart watches that when you can see if uh, how how is your heart is doing or small devices in your in your brain. Or here, for example, you can see it's a great project when the uh, when the researchers in Africa uh, is, is trying to predict in cholera, in rural, communal, the tap waters. It's fantastic. Okay, so facing all the, all the challenge regarding TNML and the, regarding, you know, develop, you know, machine learning that's part of artificial intelligence in very thin devices, you know, with very small amount of memory, it's a lot of challenge. So how we, we teach that? Well, Having a very good starting point that was what we have been developed in Harvard Engineering School by Professor VJ and uh, uh, after and uh, the, 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 the mock the course in uh, EDX when they teach all the TNML uh, applications and the deployment in TNML devices, we, we started from that experience plus what have been developed by uh, uh, Edge Impulse. And, um, one of the leading the lead, the lead companies in the industry of TNML development. So we put both together and try to teach the students. So we start with the first part of the course, you know, focus in, you know, 
what is Python, Jupyter Notebook, etc., and all the fundamentals of TNML. But uh, in, in that part, the students could understand how to use frameworks like uh, TensorFlow, you know, how to you, they create models, how to, to work to, to deal with the data sets, to clean data sets, to understand the data, you know, the, to run the models, to deploy the models inside their computers, or mainly using, using tools like, uh, like a collab from, from Google. Second, what we did was, once the, the students have the, all the knowledge or the basis about, uh, about the frameworks that we use in machine learning, in general, not, a, not talking really about TNML, but more in, in general, we start really going deep what means to develop application in TNML world, you know, all the, all the steps that must, must be, be followed. And the, the Edge Impulse Studio was very important for us in the, this moment because they help the students to very quickly to understand how to capture real data using their cell phones. They, use, they you know, using their normal cell phones, you know, the, the regular smartphones, they use the accelerometer and the, uh, and the, the microphone inside of the the cell phones to capture real data, pre-process preprocess the data, generate models that they have learned in the first part of the course, correct? And to deploy in the same the same uh, cell phone. All that knowledge we could really go into the to the end of the most important part of the course that was how we can have that model develop, you know, in a in a, in a bigger machine and you know shrink the code in order that we can put that code inside very, very, very small devices. And we did this. And, and the, the important was the students really, you know, make, uh, using their hands, you know, have their hands dirty, you know, with the data, with, the, you know, with, with bits and bytes. You know, to, you know, that you can have, uh, when the students could, could develop several types of different, you know, uh, applications you know, like uh, like uh, word detections like uh, OK Google or Alexa or vision projects where detecting if a, if a person has a mask or not a mask if a person is not a person movements etc you know that the, the students could real really uh, do these during the during the course to do that uh, we use a kit a fantastic kit that was developed by Arduino. Harvard people, Google people, for a specific for the EDX um, mock TNML course that we also use it in our in our course at uh, at the Unife. So what we did with the, the the kids from Italy, you know, received the university, we package everything because the COVID, the students was in their homes. They are they 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 were not at the university. So we send the kids to the students. The students could, could, you know, do laboratories, you know, in parallel with the, the lectures, that, the weekly lectures that they have. So, they, you know, they could experiment, they could test, they could exchange ideas uh, among them. They could develop a final project, you know, a very interesting project regarding TNML. And including the university, what they did, they, they when they sent the kids, everything was prepared for the students. At the end, that, that at the end of the course, that was now the students put back in the back in the in the, 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 the kits in a in the in the package, the original package, the original box, you know, and everything was paid for them to by mail deliver the kit back to the university, so the university can use send now for the second the, the course that we have in the, the the in the next semester, but you know. Better than, than me to talk about that, let's let's see what one of our our, our best students, Stephanie, can say about. It. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephanie Cora Coimbra, and I'm a student of computer engineering at the University of Brazil. I'm also doing the Tiny Metal course. So it's an area that's growing so fast, and it's extraordinary what we can do with that. I fell in love with this AI field, so I certainly we use that on my career. About the requisites to do the course, I had a solid base on statistics and hardware in general. But the university helps to bring closer to us the opportunity to work with machine learning. And with the kit and the material provided by our professor Marcelo, it's been a great experience. That's the kit that was sent to our homes. So we have here uh, an Arduino BLE Sense, uh, a camera, and also a cable to write the code. So it's pretty amazing, right?
I felt the need for deeper knowledge in the Python programming language as I didn't have a good contact with it, but I managed to study on my own and was more than enough to follow the project and the course. So let's continue to make things happen through the world. Thanks, Estevani. She is a, she's an amazing student. Yeah, really good. Well, the, regarding the course, the course was, was delivery uh, during, during uh, 15 weeks, you know, with a weekly, weekly lectures where the students could learn the theory and also to, to test or to, to try to code during the class with me. And uh, uh, after every class, they received a kind of a quiz, you know, in, in their homes to verify what, if they have learned it or not. So with the, together with an additional readings, you know, some codes that they have to develop, some, some notebooks with some, uh, some projects, like, uh, you know, mo models to be developed, training, etc. You know, they, they, they need to deliver every, 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 every single of that for, for a grade for the course. The students, they, they were grouped together and three or four students each and developed several several projects. It was very nice projects, you know, like, uh, like a COVID detection with cough, uh, fire, fire detection using image, you know, mask or not mask detection, you know, if the movements are correct and during the exercise, physical exercise, etc. So it was really a success and the students loved to do that. As we said before, the, and, and also the, the Stephanie comment with that, the uh, because we have students for three main areas of the university for com for the, the computer or the, the, the computer engineering from uh, control and automation electronics, we have different background. And as Stephanie comments, um, for example, she didn't know she she she, she knew a little only a little bit about about the microprocessors and very few about about the Python, for example. And we have we have a one third of the students that have very low knowledge about uh, Arduino, for example, and a lot of students didn't know Python. Half of the students never, never, never learned about Python, and the other half uh, never, never heard about, uh, or very few uh, heard about, for example, uh, uh, TensorFlow. Okay, so that was a big challenge. We have students where the, uh, the great majority very. They didn't know TensorFlow or machine learning, what, what they're talking about, and the one third of the students didn't know about, uh, about about microprocessors. Okay, so we put all together. We need to, you know, was 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 a challenge to balance that, and you know what have been developed by the because again this is the base of this was what have been developed by by Harvard, in the Harvard X uh, course, the NL course was very helpful. And when we, we did the, the postcard survey, we could realize that the students here, all they, they, they have a, it was very, very clear for them that they have a very poor knowledge about the subjects. But at the end of the course, the great majority, you know, I can say 80% of the students, you know, was very pleased with what they have learned and they are preparing to continue to learn more. So this is, this was key. And, and what we are doing now is trying to send this kind of uh, knowledge everywhere in the world. You know? I'm part of an um, a initiative you know, that is led by Dr. Marco Zenaro in the, in the ICTP in Italy, is the China ML4D. This is an amazing initiative you know, to spread the, the knowledge or the education of a China ML everywhere in the, in the developing world. So, for example, for the first phase of our project, we have selected 20 universities from, you know, more than 16 countries, you know, in Latin America, in Africa, in Asia, that will participate in our first seminar in November. We're talking about, about TML. TML, we are, the idea is to, to, to replicate what we did, not, not of course, in a, in a, in a 15 weeks course, but uh, in a very focus, we use the same kit that we use in the, in the course here in Brazil, you know, to, to teach students all over the world. But most important, to have a solid network, academic network, to exchange projects among those countries. This is our goal, okay? And we are, you know, we are starting this year with a lot of initiatives. Initiatives we are doing, have uh, lectures in Brazil. We start to have lectures in Latin America. I'm here talking with you in Africa. And... Uh, and that's that's our future, you know. Have 
HTML, you know, machine learning apply to very thin devices, to embed a device all over the world. This is the future. You know, if the IoT, you know, could uh, took the information from billions of uh, of devices, you know, and send to the cloud, let's say, to process that their data we're doing with the TNML is took all that, uh, you know, information, you know, and uh, using at the same place where the data is generated to create knowledge there in that part. Thanks a lot and stay safe. Bye.